today we're going to be talking about inclined planes. So let's say we have an inclined plane that looks something like this. It is six centimeters tall, and 121 centimeters long. So, uh, given uh, these two numbers, and well now let's say we have two points, A at the beginning of the incline, and B at the end of the incline. Now, let's draw a box, and this box is two kilograms. So, it is pushed up by a sudden force that is exerted on it. It's not a constant force, but it's pushed up such that at B, its velocity reaches zero. So, uh... <coughs> The question is, with all of this in mind, what can we figure out about this thing? So, here's our entire table. So now we're going to calculate these values at points A and B. Uh, keep in mind that data is the same for A as for B. So, uh, we can calculate data, which is the angle of this incline, by simply using some trigonometry. In specific, we have the opposite side to this angle and we have the hypotenuse so with the opposite side and the hypotenuse we can use sine theta to complete the entire thing so specifically sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse so sine theta is going to be 6 because that's opposite over 121 because that's the hypotenuse so that means theta is equal to arc sine of, uh, no, not r sine, arc sine of 6 over 121, which is about 2.84 degrees. So now we can just put that in our table, 2.84 degrees, 2.84 uh, degrees. Okay, so now what about acceleration? Well, we can find acceleration very simply, assuming that this is a frictionless plane, and it's almost frictionless, we can say that acceleration is just g sine theta. Why? Well, if you draw a free body diagram of the box on here, then you simply have fg and fn. And so, Fg can be broken up into two components. This is going to be Fg perpendicular, and this is Fg parallel. Well, actually, Fg parallel would point the other direction, uh, but you get my point. So this is Fg parallel. So now, uh, these two are going to cancel out because they're both Fg cosine theta, which simply leaves this, Fg parallel. So if Fg parallel is the only force, then we can say that's the net force, and that's equal to Ma. So this is Mg sine theta is equal to Ma, and thus A is equal to G sine theta. Plugging in 2.84, we get the answer of A being 0.495 meters per second squared. 0.495 meters per second squared and 0.495 meters per second squared. What about velocity at both points? Well, at B, we know it has to be zero. But, uh, but for A, what about uh, A? Well, we can find that out like this. The thing is, the velocity of this block, when it is pushed, is going to look like this. The acceleration is going to look like this. They're in opposite directions. So we can basically make this look like a one-dimensional problem, where V is this way and uh, acceleration A is this way. So that means that we can just use VF is equal to VI plus AT, where VF is zero. VI is what we're trying to find. And A would be, well, A is negative in this scenario because you can simplify this to a one-dimensional problem where A is negative. I'm just going to leave this blank. 
So instead, we can use the equation without time, vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2ad. So uh, we already know the acceleration, so that's good. We know the distance that it travels. That's going to be 1.21 meters. And so we're all set here. So vf squared is going to be 0, vi squared, we're trying to find vi, plus 2 times 0.495 times 1.21. Uh, now that I think about it, maybe this should actually be negative. So, uh, so now, just bringing this over to the other side, 0.495 times 1.21, and then taking the square root, we find out that vi is equal to 1.094 meters per second. So, we know this is 1.09 meters per second. This is zero meters per second. We know FG parallel is MA, and we already know A. So that means all we have to do to find FG parallel is multiply A by M. And side note, FG parallel will be the same at both locations. So now that means FG pa uh, parallel is just two, which is the mass, times 0.495, which is the acceleration, which is 0.99 newtons. So, 0.99 newtons and 0.99 newtons. Okay. So now, what about T, time? Well, now we already know VI. VI is 1.094 minus 0.495t. So, t is simply 1.094 over 0 0.495. 2.211, sorry, that was a little curved because Einstein is over here. 2.211 meters per second. Well, uh, no, not meters per second. That's not the unit of time. It's just 2.211 seconds. So, uh, time is zero at A and 2.211 seconds at B. Zero seconds. Okay, so what about kinetic and potential energy? Well, ki kinetic energy at A is going to be positive. So, we have just one half times M2 times point uh, 1.094 squared. So canceling that out, this gives us 1.198. Uh, and what's that? Sorry, joules. So uh, 1.198 joules, and it's at rest at B, so zero. Now at A, it has not gained any height because this is our y equals zero line. But at B, it's gained six centimeters of height. So we can express this as m two g ten and uh, eight point oh six. This is one point one seven six joules, which is pretty close to the value of one point one nine eight we got earlier. But some of that uh, energy was probably lost in other sources. And now M E is just the sum of K and U, so 1.198 joules and 1.179 joules. So that's it. Thank you, everybody. Whoa. So that's it. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Since it's the first day of Women's History Month, let's all come together and celebrate what women have done for our community.